Millions of women, along with men and children, marched in cities across the country and around the world the day after Donald Trump's inauguration as president. Here to discuss, senior political commentator Kaylee McEnany, Lauren Duca, award-winning journalist and weekend editor for Teen Vogue, Rachel Sklar, founder of The List, a platform for professional women from all industries, and senior political commentator Simone Sanders and Anna Navarro, and also Alice Stewart. Look at this. I'm giving the view a run for its money. <laughs> Top that, Whoopi and Joy. All right, so let's go. Let's talk about this. I've been wanting to have uh, you guys on to discuss this, so thank you for coming on. Kaylee, I'm going to start with you. What you saw this weekend, was it a movement or do you think it was a moment? Uh, I think it was a moment, uh, particularly because it was not a women's march. It was a liberal march. There are 42% of women who voted for Donald Trump. I'm one of them. Uh, the fact that this women's march excluded pro-life groups who specifically asked to be included meant that this was just a march on behalf of liberal causes in the Democratic Party. So while I support your right to, to free exercise of your opinion, I don't see this being a cohesive movement because they, they espouse the same values that got rejected in the election. Okay, but as I, as I understand, and the women were able to march. They just didn't like the signs or that maybe they were, they were concerned about them actually joint partnering with I, I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the, the, the march actually put out a statement that they were not pro-life and that's not what they were marching on behalf of. Okay. So whether they were eventually allowed to march, I'm not they entirely were, sure. They were, they were not partners, but of course the march was open to all. I'm sorry, say again. Yes. Say again, Rachel. I mean, so uh, the... The unify the core principles of the march. The core mission was pro uh, pro choice. So anybody who had an anti choice mission, obviously that wouldn't make any sense to partner. But it was open to anyone to march. I mean, it was <laughs> yeah. You know, it wasn't like there were bouncers. Uh, yeah. And I, I would love to make a point about. I actually think that the fact that this wasn't just a march about women, the fact that this was a march about equality across the board, and uh, I think that a clear reason why that comes down to a question of ideology makes sense on that issue and there are there's a partisanship there but I was marching in New York and I saw signs for LGBTQ rights I heard chants for Black Lives Matter and I heard you know, so many supportive voices and that that to me means this is a movement this is a vocal outcry that is insisting upon a certain level of equality that many feel is being challenged. Yeah, and, and I, I spoke with a Trump supporter who is uh, pro-life, and she said she marched uh, as well. What, what stuck out to you most about this march, Anna? The size of it, uh, the timing of it, that it happened uh, the day after the inaugural. You know, it was a remarkable sight to see all of these uh, red hat-wearing Trump supporters on the streets of Washington and all of these pink pussy hat wearing uh, march goers in the streets of Washington and there were no clashes. Half a million people marched in Washington. Over three million watch marched around the United States. There was not one arrest. I think they did it the right way. They did it peacefully. On one day we saw the celebration of democratic succession. The 45th president gets sworn in. The next day there were people protesting that president. And I think that's an awesome sight. It's an awesome awesome message of democracy in action, whether it's going to be a moment or a movement, none of us know, but we do know that they made history. And, you know, I think people there were marching for all sorts of reasons. I think some, I saw signs that were pro-life. I saw signs that were pro-choice. I saw signs that were pro-undocumented. I saw signs that were funny. That were absolutely hilarious. I saw men marching, children marching. I saw women of all ages marching. It had a good, positive feeling towards it. And again, I think it's remarkable that these two things happened within 24 hours of each other in the same city, and World War III didn't erupt. Yeah, there were there were uh, no arrests or anything, and you know, related to the march. I, I want you guys to listen to what uh, I should say, women, guys. You know what I mean just using the vernacular. Here is White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer, um, what he said today about Saturday. I think he has a healthy respect for the First Amendment. Um, and he, this is, you know, this is what makes our country so beautiful, is that on one day you can inaugurate a president, on the next day people can occupy the same space to protest something. Um, but he's also cognizant to the fact that a lot of these people were there um, to protest an issue of concern to them and not against anything. So, Alice, to you, uh, you know, as a conservative woman, do you agree with Sean Spicer? 
Uh, I think one of the, I agree with, with everyone here that it was remarkable to see such a huge turnout and it was peaceful and it was, it was a good day. It was a good two days uh, of, of people coming out here on the streets of Washington. But like Haley said, this was not a woman's march. This was a liberal woman's march, a, a livid liberal women's march and one of the problems moving forward is that they uh, were defined by gender and not by purpose and I think that's going to be a problem moving forward much like Hillary Clinton without a, a common purpose it will be difficult to move forward okay. and I think what, what we're seeing with Donald Trump here he was able to galvanize millions of women unlike Hillary Clinton was able to but if they can if they can capitalize on their ability to organize like they have and really uh, get people together for a common purpose yeah. I think they do have a movement and not just a moment okay uh oh rachel before at simona you've been sitting by patiently but rachel's on skype and you what did you what were you saying when alice was speaking i just want to push back here on on what kaylee said and and the, you know the notion that women came out so strongly for donald trump hillary clinton won the popular vote by a stunning 2.9 million votes um you know uh donald trump didn't win women he won white women and i think it's really important to note that this was a huge protest. It was possibly the largest okay. protest in We're the United States. We're not denying that, but uh, to, your, to your point, right. Donald the Trump won 53% of the white women vote. That's more than Hillary Clinton. So I think to say that he can't you guys galvanize are both talking women, at the same I think time. that's wrong. I, I strongly disagree with the dilution of what happened on Saturday because it was remarkable. And it was a remarkable repudiation of the threat of rights being rolled back under this president. And, and Simone, to that point, do you think the White House is kidding itself when, when it says that, 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 that these women weren't protesting against Donald Trump? Yes, I also think the White House is kidding itself, and they're again trying to uh, give us these "quote unquote" alternative facts, these lies, and saying that uh, the president-elect, pardon me, the president respects the First Amendment because we all know that he has bullied and belittled folks that have spoken out against him. Look, I think this this protest this march was a lot. It was a protest. It was um, a coming out for women's rights. And I want to I want to push back on the notion that because pro life an, a pro life organization wasn't included in the partnership, it wasn't a march for all women. I think the foundation of the women's rights movement is the expansion of women's rights and not the limitation. And to include a group that is about the limitation of the rights of women is kind of anti to the foundation of the no, women's it, rights movement. You know, you can, you, I can advocate for voting rights. You don't have to vote. You know what I mean? But, but you should not be kept from voting. So you don't have to believe in abortion uh, or even want abortions to happen. But one should not be kept from having an abortion. And the last point I want to make is the point on intersectionality. I think this march encompassed women of color. And that was really important. Women of color um, oftentimes have not come out for the women's rights movement because of the history of the women's rights movement. And this point about that there was no violence, I think we also have to be careful with that because a lot of times, especially in marches around uh, police against police brutality and things of that nature, you know, officers are, are much more willing to uh, jump in in the protester crowd than they are when a group of women, predominantly white women actually, in some areas of the march are protesting. So we have to be careful with that because a lot okay. of the All other right. marches... Kaylee, I promise the first word on the other side of the break. We've got to get to the break. Okay. We'll be right back. Back now, Kaylee McEnany is here, Lauren Duca, Rachel Sklar, Simone Sanders, Anna Navarro, and Alice Stewart. And so I'm just going to step back and let everybody talk. So, <laughs> Kaylee, uh, you, you sort of took umbrage to something that Simone was saying. Yeah, she referred to this pro-life group that wanted to be a part of this movement as um, wanting to roll back the rights of women or limiting the rights of women, when in fact, I, I disagree with that characterization entirely. In fact, it's pro-choice groups who limit the rights of women, and that's the right to How life. Okay, that's the right to life. No, for one no, I listen, please, please the whole time. Let me finish, Simone. The pro-choice groups are the one limiting the right to life for millions of unborn women and babies who are slaughtered to the tune of half a million each year. Those are the groups who are rolling back the rights of women. And you want to talk about this administration rolling back the rights of women, Rachel? No, yes. not so. This administration wants to put in place paid maternity leave. It's easy to go out there and scream about Trump being anti-women or wanting to take away your rights. But name for me the right that Trump wants to take away from you. Well, uh, I mean... To your point, the, the very fundamental and constitutionally enshrined and protected right to choice. The single most critical uh, thing that a woman can do for her own economic autonomy is to have a child. 
and that should be the choice of a woman for a whole host of reasons. But to say that pro -cho the pro-choice movement is limiting the rights of women is like a, a, is a complete alternative fact. Right, but because an unborn like baby has no rights, no rights to life, no right to choice. I'd also like to note that Donald it. Trump on the campaign trail definitely said that women should be punished for having an abortion. And then today he signed legislation that totally codified the things that, 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 he, that he said on the campaign trail that demonstrated that he is not here, quote unquote, for the rights of women. But just, just to expand on this conversation, I think that when we talk about women's rights and a movement for women, it's diverse. You know, it's diverse in the way it looks. It's diverse in perspectives. And it, we can no movement can be about limiting. It's surprising to me as a man that the, the, the conversation often revolves around reproductive rights when, I mean, but women are concerned about the see, economy, women yes. are concerned about, well, that, you know, you jobs, like about Don, health care. I think the reason for that is Don, a fundamental this equality. Is the, this is this, the, uh, that's, equality the, requires the, reproductive rights. So something Simone touched on, which is we often forget, is that you can be pro-life and pro-choice. But the movement, the feminist movement, the f March for Equality requires reproductive rights in order to achieve social, economic, and political equality. It also equality. requires okay. respecting the okay. rights okay. of LGBTQ Don. people. Okay, go ahead, Anna. So, okay, look, can I, can, got, uh, ladies, I think we're getting way too narrow with this discussion. This discussion has now become a debate about abortion or exactly. not abortion. Exactly, thank Listen, you. This march was about much more than that. Let's remember how this march started. This march started by one citizen, one mom, one woman in Hawaii who posted because she was so upset about Donald Trump getting elected that she was going to go march. Next thing she knew, she woke up the next day and thousands of women have said, were saying, I'm going with you. This then got co-opted by organizations, but this was at its root a citizen-led, citizen-activated, citizen-started and initiated effort. And I think women were there were marching for a whole host of reasons. I think a lot of women and men and their allies were there there because they were very concerned at the tone during the campaign. They're concerned that uh, their voices may not be heard in this administration. Frankly, the man's been president for 90 hours. We don't know what he's going to do or what he's not going to do. I think people were there to send a message. The pussycats wanted to be heard roaring, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what they did. So let's not and get into this little I, I narrow one... silo about abortion. You guys are falling straight for that trap. I think out that uh, when you when you you know note the pussy hats, I mean the whole point that they were it was an unbelievably organic movement of there was a pattern posted to the internet and, and women knit their own hats and and it had exploded in an organic way atop the heads of all the marchers in, in an absolutely unmissable way. But the whole point of these adorable little pointy eared pink caps that you saw everyone wearing is because the president of the United States was caught on tape talking about how he felt entitled to grab women by the... And it's all yours. Yeah. Well, so, here, here's the thing. Don't call it a women's people. march. That's not what it was. 42% of women turned out and voted for Trump. So don't purport you, wait, to represent hold on. all women. 53% of white women voted no, for Trump. 42% of all women and black all women. women. I'm talking black women. Again, black women, black women, black women, black women, black women were not that's voting that's for Donald Trump. Let's be very clear here. The march, This. let's be very clear here on that point. It was white women that elected Donald Trump. Black women and Latino women did not do this. The second thing is this march sent a message, not just to Donald Trump, I don't think it was was also a message to Democrats. It was letting them know that, look, all of those people yeah. out there in the streets, they are ready for change. Yeah. So this should empower and embolden Democrats to go out there and speak okay. truth to power on women's issues all and right. progressive rights. Look, Alice, Alice, just, Alice Dawn, and Lauren on the other side. Look. I got to take a break. I got to take a break. We'll be right back. Back now with my panel, and you know it's a good one when Alice Stewart and Anna Navarro have a tough time getting in. So, Alice, you get the first word. Go ahead. Uh, I, th I agree. I think, w to, to Anna's point, this has become so focused on birth control and uh, reproductive rights where I think w as a woman, and many women that I, I know and speak with, all issues are women's issues, not just reproductive rights. And I think it's important to keep in mind this issue in this March started with frustration and disappointment at Hillary Clinton's loss, and now it's morphed into questioning what Donald Trump will do for women. And I think already he has shown that he is going to stand up for women when it comes to what he's put in place for, for child care and what he's doing for uh, putting women in, in office and equal pay for women. And I think, as Sean Spicer said today, watch his actions and his deeds, and he will, we will see soon enough that he is out there to uh, 
to promote women and to, to make women's lives better in all areas and when it comes to... But I think one thing is important moving forward with this movement, a shared sense of victimhood is not a way to bring about change. And I think if they take this one step further and find a, a one mission, one cause, and continue and stay engaged, I think there's a, a, a great movement ahead okay, if they stay engaged and keep the excitement. Honestly, Lauren, I was Lauren. in the march and I didn't feel a sense of victimhood. I will tell you, I, I felt a, a sense of girl power, empowerment. Look, let me tell you something. Any man who's watching this right now, any man who's got a daughter, a wife, a girlfriend, a mother, knows that one pissed off woman is a lot on your hands. Three million pissed off women marching in the streets of uh, the United States should make everybody's little ears perk up. And six of them, I just let them say what they want because I don't want the wrath of any of you. But, <laughs> but Lauren, uh, go ahead to that point because this, uh, just, you can put up the tweets. Donald Trump tweeted about it. The president tweeted about it. He said, watch protests yesterday. was under the impression that we had just had, just had an election. Why didn't these people vote? Celebs hurt cause badly. I don't know if they voted or not. And then he said, peaceful protests are a hallmark of our democracy, even if it, I don't always agree. I recognize the rights of people to express their views. That was the next day after, you know, so I guess sort of correcting himself. Do you think that this got under his skin? I do. Do you think he should be concerned? Uh, I do think that this got under his skin, but I, I, I would encourage him to stop thinking in terms of winning and losing. I feel like he often thinks in terms of who is against him and who are the losers comes up a lot in the rhetoric of the tweets. This is a huge swath of people that turned up in hundreds of cities, it, three over three million people, and we don't have a full count. This is the American. This is a representative portion of the American public to show up and actually get out of bed and be marching. And I, you know, it's not about victimhood. I, I, I think the uh, points we were making earlier about you know getting caught up in individual issues. This was about sending a message about fighting for equality and doing so with unity and solidarity and positivity. I, I mean, it was exuberant okay. when I was there. So okay. I, if, I, if I can do a lightning round with all of you, because we, we have a little bit of time on the air here. So uh, lightning round about what you each think of the people who marched on Saturday. What, they, what should they do next? What should they do next, Kaylee? Uh, give Donald Trump a chance because he's actually proposing to increase women's rights, not retract them. Lauren? Something. Call your Congress people. Call your representatives. Donate if you can. Commit to doing something every single day in some small way. Don't chill out at all. Simone, <laughs> take the fight locally. Look, we need we need women's women's rights and and this fight for equality, equity across the board locally. So and we need women of color engaged and involved at every level. So look, if you don't have a women of color on your board, put her on your board. Mm. If you're doing planning, involve women of color. We need to get engaged. Alice. Run for office. These people would be tremendous uh, public servants or get involved in voter registration or get out the vote. Definitely get involved. Ms. Glar? Hang on to those pussy hats because <laughs> from all indications from Donald Trump's cabinet picks and his behavior over the campaign and as president-elect and as president, it seems pretty clear that we're all going to need him. Ms. Navarro. Look, I think they need to. Uh, we all need to stay engaged. We need to stay informed. We need to stay active. We need to register to vote. We need to register our friends and our family to vote. If all that fails, drink, eat Hagen dazs and open up a knit shop. <laughs> <laughs> Anna, uh, thank you for the levity. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you joining us. Simone Sanders, Kaylee McEnany, Alice Stewart, Rachel Scalar, Lauren Duca, and Anna Navarro. I hope that we can continue this conversation. I appreciate your candor. Thanks, Thanks so much for joining us. That's it for us tonight. Thanks for watching. I'll see you right back here tomorrow.